Welcome to a video podcast about Caldera version 10. Let's start with the new look and feel of version 10. Here is the current or old version 9 look and feel. What once was a futuristic design is nowadays a little grayed out. So say goodbye to version 9 and hello to version 10. We directly can see the more Adobe-like design, calm, reduced, straight icons. The only thing you may miss are the nice little personalized printer icons. But therefore we have something new in version 10. You can now customize the icons of the printer. So I can change that one to a small printer or change back to anyone which is pleasant, like digital press. And what I also can do, I can change the color of each printer. So you can make groups for example, all the UV printers, or all the textile printers and put them into the same color group. So that's already a nice feature in version 10. So here on the left, you can see the image bar, the printer dialog, and of course, all other windows are also adjusted to the new look and feel. And this is Tiling Plus in version 10, where we will see some enhancements later on. Last but not least, Compose here on the left and Easy Media. And now let's look at the performance of version 10. Version 10 is not just a nice design. Under the hood we will discover some nice enhancements. New algorithms provide up to twice as fast rip times. The Caldera C4 PC with graphic card processing is ripping files up to 5 times quicker. The newest APPE 3.3 is integrated, which alone is 5% faster on itself, and 64-bit, so that means in version 9, you were only able to address a maximum 4GB of RAM. Now the full RAM of your PC is used. So let's see some benchmarks for some different hardware setups. First we see an iMac i5 3.2GHz with 8GB RAM. We ripped the Caldera test file in 4 and 6 colors CMYK in 1 and 2 bits. Here you see the achieved ripping times in version 9. And here the much quicker rip times in version 10. Here the ripping times for the Caldera C3 PC, which is an i7, 3.4 GHz with 16 GB RAM, ripping times in version 9. And version 10. And here the new flagship of Caldera, the C4 PC, which has a speed upgrade by Caldera and is ripping parallel on the processor and on the graphic card. And here you see the ripping times in version 9. And this is what you get with version 10. The Caldera C4 is a Dell Alienware Area 51 high-end PC. It's water-cooled, overlocked, with a special Caldera speed upgrade. A NVIDIA graphic card is parallelly ripping. It's only sold as a hardware bundle, so PC plus speed upgrade, and the price is approximately $4,000. Let's see a little promo video about that beast. So after new design and new performance, let's look at the new functions in version 10. Let's start with Quick Print. Instead of creating specific workflows, you can now use any user configuration as a so-called Quick Print workflow. That means that you can process a huge amount of files with just one right click. So let me demo that for you. So I take a job of two printer. And now, of course, I have a lot of windows with a lot of settings which I can apply or not apply. So like some marks, some color bars, activating a cutter or 
bring some color into my images, which should be applied to all of the other images as well. But also everything about color management, the ICC profiles, rendering intents, whatever. All that can be saved in one single location, that's the user configuration. So I hit here save and I say, okay, that's my new setting. And even so afterwards, I can make some changes. So for example, from print here, I wanna go to rip and the marks, no, I don't want that ones. Okay, that I just save and overwrite my existing setting. And now this user configuration is automatically a so-called quick print. So I select several files, go send, printer, choose the printer, and there I have my setting. So with just that click, all of those files will fall into the spooler and will be ripped with exactly these settings I have defined before. Also new in version 10 are QR codes. They can now be added to each print. They can include things like file name, pages, number, date, job ID, printer name, free text, etc. Your production workflow can be automated even further. In combination with Sun Cut Center, you can even achieve a fully automated cutting workflow. So let's look at that as well. It's pretty easy. You just go into the tab marks and there you will find a new section called optical code. Immediately you will see here a little QR code underneath the image. And with the plus you can edit all this. So either you create a new one or just edit the existing. And here in that section with a right click, you can choose all these like file name, job ID, whatever. Let's take also some free text. And here I just have to go into that free text and adjust QR code. Yeah, you can even put a cut pass around the QR code. So later, if this is a um, self thesis vinyl, you can get off the code and put it on the back of your final product, for example. Yeah, so that's a nice feature, I think. Now, speaking of the cutting workflow with the zone cut center, I first have to activate the cutting, choose the zone cut center. And then, yep, you will see first the old barcodes, which you all know, so the long barcode. I zoom in a little bit. Now this can be changed to actually QR code. And the difference is the camera of the zoom can read that out. So you just have to place the media with the print on it, move the camera to this QR code. It will automatically recognize the orientation and of course, which cut file you want to use. So theoretically, you can put a full roll of cut jobs and let the zoom do the job. So as mentioned earlier, also in Tiling Plus, there are some cool new features like horizontal vertical split of tiles. And I will show you that also in a demo. So let's fire up Tiling Plus. I have a job here with several rows and tiles. Now what's new in version 10 is that you can combine several tiles to one, like I do here, or you can split either horizontal or vertical existing tiles. Yeah, so I split those into two rows instead of one. And I can exclude several tiles from being produced. So you're not confused later on which tiles do I ha really have to print which ones not. So I create a poster and only the tiles which have no cross about it will be actually printed. So that may help you with some doors or windows in your graphics or any gaps which you don't want to use anyways. So before you that was pretty complicated to put in some unregular tiles. Now it's totally easy, just one click. So grommets are not really new, but so far you always had to go into Tiling Plus to put grommets on it, even if your file is just one meter by 50, for example. Now it's totally easy. You take the normal printing dialog, you go to marks, and there you will find grommets. And there you have the same dialog as in Tiling Plus. You adjust the size and the gaps between, hit OK, and you're done. Automatic update notification. On each start of Caldera, it will check for updates and inform you when there is one and offer you to download this with just one click. So that keeps you informed and up to date. The new Printboard plugin can now be used with every version 10 Caldera without buying an extra box and with nearly no setup. 
It allows Caldera users to monitor the whole production on one big screen. You see some thumbnails and informations and a nice little statistic to the side where you can see for example printed square meters per day and printer. So here you see how it looks like in full screen. We have here three printers and you see thumbnails of all the jobs which have been ripped or are ripping right now in Spooler. And on the right side you see the statistics about daily printed area and split into printers as well. The new version also includes an integrated step and repeat module optimized for pattern repetition for printing textiles or other graphics that need to be seamlessly repeated like wallpapers. There's a detect drop button which will compute automatically the right drop to apply. This textile optimized feature is included in all current version 10 RIP solutions. So let's see that in action as well. I take a special pattern which is meant to use be used for that and first I will try a normal repetition so meaning just via copies yeah so I just increase the copies of that file and of course I get a bigger uh, file but only copy by copy so I cannot use the full width of the media so if I change that to textile and full then I can totally fill up my media doesn't matter how long doesn't matter how wide the actual media is. Now if we zoom in a little bit we see that something is wrong here so the right orientation is not right. So I just clicked on detect drop and it will automatically analyze the pattern and rotate it if needed. Yeah, so that's really great for stuff like that. And last but not least, contour nesting is now also included in version 10. The contour nesting tool helps save ink and media by eliminating any need to print beyond the cut contours. More efficient nesting according to the external outline of each individual element saves a lot of media. It was introduced in version 9.2 and is now included for everybody in version 10. So for example, I want to print that star. It already has a cut contour inside of it, but it has a lot of white space around it. So if I want to have like, let's say 80 copies of that star, now type in 80, of course it will nest all these with the white space around. So I end up with four meters 70 around that in total. So if I activate the contour function, it will analyze the actual cut contour and throw away everything else which you don't need. So that's what you get. And if you see the length of the media, it's now 1 meter 40 compared to 4 meter 70 before. You can still adjust the bleed between the copies, so that's really nice. And of course, you will save a lot of media and ink. So that's version 10 by Caldera. Thanks for your attention. For more information, visit us at www.caldera.com.